Good morning from just outside of Memphis, Tennessee. I made it. Oh, that feels really good. The first thing I saw when I crossed into Arkansas was a fight between three teenage kids and it ended up with one of them going to hospital and I just thought, oh man, I haven't seen anything like that <laughs> the rest of this trip. What's this state going to be like? But it turned out that the folks of Arkansas were so beautifully friendly. Immediately the land flattened out. There was corn and rice and soybean in the plantations and a lot of water too. Four or five days of really extreme rain. If there was ever a word that described exactly what I do to day to day then, this is it. In Corning, Arkansas, a thunderstorm was coming. So I sought shelter in the Relax Inn and the owner, Sam, was so delighted that a foreigner had decided to stay in his motel that by the time I came back in from the bike with my wallet, he'd got two gas station beers out and just left them on the counter for me. And that kind of set the scene for Arkansas. The next morning before I headed off, Sam came in with a Tupperware container full of Mexican food for my next couple of meals made by his wife. Less than 100 miles to Memphis. I just got my first puncture in over a thousand. It was kind of okay though, because it happened right next to a sign which lifted my spirits because I'm just a small child. <laughs> there was one thing on my mind and it wasn't getting to Memphis, it was seeing my wife. I hadn't seen Ems for over two months. So I started putting the word out to a few friends in Memphis and we settled on a finishing date, which was about an hour and a half after Em flew in. So not only would she be welcomed by a bunch of people that she's already met, but I'd also, I'd also arrive as well. Uh, I told her that I wasn't gonna get in till Thursday morning. So the surprise was on. Now I just had to make it. So I continued through Arkansas. Everyone was just super friendly from road workers to the pilots in their crop duster plane zooming overhead. And then I needed one final big act of kindness to get me to Memphis on time. Down here is a freeway. Ordinarily, bicycles are not allowed on freeways, but around the US, there is one rule contrary to that, when there's not an alternative parallel route. There is not an alternative parallel route between here and Mark Tree, which is only eight miles away. But in order to get there now, I have to go that way and cycle another 30 miles on top. Apparently, Arkansas didn't get the memo about that rule. I don't want to do another 30 miles. <laughs> oh, that's so annoying. So I was just readying myself to ride an extra 35 miles, another three hours on my final day, which would have meant I wouldn't get to Memphis on time for this finale and surprising M. So I was just about to get back on my bike, turn around and head off when a state trooper drove by and I waved at him and he kind of almost just said, nah, we're not talking. Drove on by for 50 meters, then stopped and reversed. Game on. <laughs> you're gonna go across at least two bridges. Okay. Where you're gonna be probably about that far from the fog line. I tell you what, if I just so happen to be behind you, uh huh. How long is it gonna take you to go across that? Should take you long. No. You look like you're a pretty fit gentleman. I'm fit now. Well, I tell you what, you get to pedaling. What's your name, sir? Jason Fagan. Jason. But here's the thing. You're gonna have to get off at the first Mark Tree exit. 100%. So, why don't we just get to pedal? Jason, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Hey, no problem, get to pedaling. I'm gonna be behind you to make to make sure nobody Oh, sure I safe. so appreciate it. you gotta it. get off on that first Mark Tree exit. 100% promise. All right, Dave. I can honestly say I've never been so happy in all my life, apart from obviously my wedding day. This guy is a legend. <laughs> Quick thank you hey, so much. Anytime. 
Anytime, like, Daisy, come around Arkansas anymore, just holler at me. Mate. I'll take care of it. I'm going to tell more people to come this way. All right, <laughs> right, should we get going? Sure, let's do it. Woohoo! Oh, State Trooper Jason Fagan, you are a legend. You absolutely saved the day. You saved my bacon. I was so, so happy whizzing along the freeway shoulder with him behind me with his lights going. This guy is a freaking legend. Oh, he's just saved me hours and hours of pedaling. <laughs> Oh, I can't explain how happy I am right now. And made it across and then it was just 40 miles into Memphis and I could take it kind of easy. Even though I'd been to Memphis time and time again, I couldn't imagine that I'd just ridden almost one and a half thousand miles across a good stretch of the United States and I was gonna come in from a different angle to this town that I loved. Seeing the Mississippi River, the pyramid, in Memphis, that familiar skyline. <laughs> that feels good. <laughs> 30 miles left, 20 miles left, 10 miles left. And then I was met by my good friend, Rod Wellington. Oh, I've known Rod for years and years and years. He's, he's an adventurer. He's completed brilliant expeditions in the past. He's paddled down the Murray and the Mississippi. Uh, and he's also the first North American person to paddle the entire conjoined Missouri-Mississippi waterways, about 3,800 miles. He got on his bike and came and met me on the west side of the Mississippi on the bridge. So, so good to see Rod. Going back to the fact that I was trying to surprise Em, she was flying in at that time, but I hadn't wanted to kind of spoil the surprise by showing how close I was to Memphis. So for the last day and a half, I turned my tracker off and Rod had noticed. Yeah, so yesterday I'm swimming in the ocean, Gulfport, uh, Mississippi, and I can, I can connect with uh, Dave Cornquay in Memphis. I'm, it's only a six, seven hour drive, I'm on it. But I wonder where he is. All right, the tracker, yeah, I gotta check the track. He's not even anywhere near Memphis yet, according to this. Ah, but maybe he shut it off. So across the bridge we went, down below the Mississippi, flowing fast. We get on there in a couple of days. God, I can't wait for that. And then halfway across the I-55 bridge on this brilliant pedestrian uh, gangway is the state line sign, which effectively kind of runs right down the middle of the Mississippi. So crossed from Arkansas into Tennessee to a proper Canadian welcome. I'm not an official American. Actually, I'm Canadian. But welcome to Memphis, Tennessee! Woo! <laughs> and then just a couple of miles left, Rod and I came off the bridge, followed the Greenway, beautiful path alongside the Mississippi Riverside. If you believe in the highest floods, that there's so much water that that entire path and park floods. It's underwater, just incredible. Luckily, that wasn't the case this time and we rode on down and then Rod went ahead and I waited for a couple of minutes, just kind of catching my breath, enjoying the moment. And then into the Tennessee Welcome Center, right above the cobblestones where I first came into Memphis pretty much eight years ago to the day on my paddleboard back then. And then some old familiar friends just waiting right there in the car park. Well, we're waiting here for Dave Cornthwaite to come in, and there he comes right there, Dave Cornthwaite, arrival in Memphis. Welcome. The same place where I'd started the bike car journey back in 2012, kind of linking in finally with two previous Expedition 1000 journeys and seeing all those old faces. The one shame was M wasn't there. Her flight had been delayed, so I had to wait a couple of hours before our good friend Richard Day picked her up from the airport and then transported her to a nearby bar where I think it was about time for the final surprise of the journey. So the final operation of the day is to surprise M, who has arrived a bit too late for the actual finale, but we're now at a Wolf River Conservancy party in Memphis. And she's just walked in. We are coming up on two minutes, fifty million miles. So the way it's going to work, we're going to have seven rounds tonight. Uh, six, six questions per round. We're going to work with you. Two minutes, fifty million miles. So awesome.
awesome to finish, especially surrounded by people that I care for and love so deeply. And another adventure just around the corner. Not a thousand miles this time, but there's always time to go paddle on the Mississippi River. From the road to the water. This has been journey number 15. Thanks for following along and yeah, I really appreciate you guys just being there. Those little messages of support mean so much, probably more than you know. And it's so, so nice just to be able to share these journeys with the magic of a phone. That's all it takes. It adds another element, another perspective to my journeys. And I'm always looking for stories to share and it really heightens my own uh, experience of the road, of the route, of the people. I've really enjoyed the last month, except maybe the heat stroke. But of course that led to a different one. I guess the lessons that I've learned is that, you know, a big change in a plan doesn't constitute failure. If anything, it made the journey more enjoyable. I'm so, so glad that I ended up experiencing Colorado and Kansas and Missouri and Arkansas rather than those hot, long desert days. And I've so enjoyed riding on this recumbent bicycle. If you ever have a chance to ride a recumbent, I fully, fully recommend it. It's a little bit wobbly at the beginning, as you will have seen when I started way back there in Palo Alto in California at the end of July. But uh, I'll miss Elvis, but Azeb are kindly gifting the Yes Tribe a smaller recumbent bicycle. So if any of you are members of the Yes Tribe and you fancy taking it on a little journey, we've now got a recumbent to, uh, to give you all that experience as well. So yeah, get on the Yes Tribe group, have a look at sayyesmore.com and in a couple of weeks we'll, we'll get that running. But for now, I'm gonna go rest, spend time with my wife and my friends and enjoy Memphis before the Mississippi calls once more. Ooh. Signing out.